before I get started, I have to thank my co-author, Rebecca Krogman. Uh, she's not listed here, but she plays a pretty key role in my uh, title slide. Without her, this project wouldn't have been possible. She really helped support me throughout. So as many of us already know and have learned across the last day and a half, catfish angling is popular. People like to fish for catfish. Um, in 2016, a survey showed that 28% of U.S. anglers were interested in targeting catfish. Um, maybe some of this interest comes from the abilities that catfish provide for angling across a wide variety of systems. So you can target catfish in rivers and streams, as well as in lakes and reservoirs and ponds, ponds of which are especially important in Iowa. Uh, all Iowa anglers like to fish a good farm pond. When we look at trophy or flathead catfish, uh, we see that anglers are specifically interested in trophy sized flatheads, with 82% of anglers indicating that they favored management strategies to promote and establish trophy flathead catfish fisheries. Uh, this sentiment has certainly been echoed in Iowa, and we've also seen an increase in catfish interest in the state, um, with interest in catfishing doubling between 2007 and 2018. Unfortunately, when it comes to reservoir flathead catfish in the Midwest, we just don't really know a whole lot. Um, a lot of reservoir research has been done in the southeastern United States uh, for flathead catfish, uh, likely due to historically higher exploitation rates and interest in flathead catfish fishing in reservoirs in the southeastern region of the country. Um, Studies have shown, however, that there are differences between northern and southern flathead catfish populations, and that these differences um, suggest region-specific research might be really necessary if we want to develop informed management plans and understand what's going on with populations across um, the country. Specifically in Iowa, we're really lacking on reservoir flathead catfish information. Um, we have virtually none. Uh, we have a small but mighty body of catfish research in the state, um, but there are a lot of gaps. Um, most research has focused on stream and river populations, and the focal species has often been channel catfish rather than flathead catfish. So as a member of the large impoundments research team, I was specifically interested in reservoirs, and as a researcher in general, I saw an information gap and had this burning desire to fill it. So we came up with a project to get some baseline information on our reservoir flathead catfish populations. First, we assessed population demographics, such as size, structure, condition, and growth of flathead catfish in two of our Iowa large reservoirs. Additionally, we estimated survival and mortality of flathead catfish in these reservoirs. And finally, we used uh, some modeling to simulate the effects of various length regulations, specifically to look at abundances of large individuals in reservoir populations. So we focused on two reservoirs within the state, um, in fact, the two largest reservoirs in the state of Iowa, uh, Rathbun Lake, located in southeastern Iowa, and Lake Red Rock, located in central Iowa. Um, both reservoirs are flood control reservoirs managed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and both are also popular recreational fishing destinations in the state. We sampled for flatheads in July and August of 2019 using daytime electrofishing, and we specifically targeted preferred habitat types, such as woody debris, riprap, rocky shorelines, uh, to maximize our catch rates and get as big of a sample size as we could. Uh, we also used a ch utilized a chase boat for this same reason, to scoop up any flatheads that the electrofishing dip netters missed or that rolled up after the electrofishing boat had passed. All fish that were captured were measured, weighed, and we took pectoral spines from each individual for age estimation. In addition to our 2019 data, we included some previously collected data from 2010 to 2013 to help increase our sample size. Um, again, this data was from Rathbun and Red Rock Reservoirs. And I also wanted to mention that our age estimation was completed using cross-sectioning of the basal recess of pectoral spines, uh, specifically because that method was fairly efficient and effective for age estimation, as well as that was how our 2010 to 2013 uh, data had been processed in the past, so we wanted to remain as consistent as possible. For our analysis, we illustrated size structure via length frequency histograms and compared uh, length frequency distributions between populations using a KS test. And we also looked at mean total length, again, comparing them between populations, uh, this time using a two-tailed T-test. Um, our index of condition was relative weight, and we compared that 
between populations using two-tailed t-tests, and we also use dummy variable regression to compare length-weight relationships between populations. Uh, growth was illustrated using the von Bertalanthe growth equation, um, again looking at growth between populations, as well as we modeled an overall growth model for just reservoir flathead catfish in general. And finally, we used catch curve analysis to estimate mortality and using those estimates subsequently get values of survival. So after getting all this population dynamics information, we wanted to pop it into FAMS and model three different types of regulations, specifically with the hope of increasing the number of larger individuals within reservoir populations. So we modeled three different length limits. Uh, we had a 305 to 381 millimeter protected slot limit, which is, if you work in English, 12 to 15 inches. Um, 381 to 432 millimeter protected slot limit, or 15 to 17 inches. And then we also looked at a 381 millimeter or 15 inch maximum length limit. And specifically, our output was looking at uh, the effects of these regulations on the number of quality and preferred size individuals. Um, again, because we want to see how we can increase the number of larger individuals in our reservoir populations to kind of fit the needs of anglers and their desire for trophy flatheads. Overall, we captured 541 fish across the two reservoirs, um, with a greater number of fish being captured in Rathbun Lake compared to Lake Red Rock. We got about 125 more fish out of Rathbun than Red Rock. Um, KS tests found that length frequency distributions did not differ, but mean total length significantly differed between the reservoirs, uh, with fish in Lake Red Rock having a greater mean total length than fish in Rathbun. Um, mean total length in Red Rock was 316 millimeters, or about 12 and a half inches, whereas in Rathbun Lake, mean total length was 282 millimeters, or 11 inches. And if you look at our uh, length frequency histogram for both lakes, we can see a lot of our individuals are in this smaller 100 to 300 millimeter range. Um, so not a lot of big fish out there, but a lot of smaller individuals. Mean relative weight also differed between populations, again with Lake Red Rock having larger fish than uh, Lake Rathbun. Uh, we also found that our regression slopes of the length weight regressions uh, were similar between populations, so the rate at which weight was being added with increases in length was similar between Red Rock and Rathbun fish, um, but those y-intercepts were significantly different, with fish in Rathbun Lake being consistently smaller than fish in Lake Red Rock. Our age estimates across, the both across both reservoirs ranged from 0 to 17 years, um, with fish in Rathbun Lake having a greater median age than fish in Red Rock. I believe median age in Rathbun was 3 years, whereas it was 2 years in Red Rock. Um, and based on our Von Burt analysis, we found that uh, fish were... Our L infinity parameter was similar between the reservoirs, so fish have the potential to reach uh, similar sizes, similar maximum sizes in each reservoir. But our K value specifically, our Brody growth coefficient, was uh, significantly different between the populations. And we found that fish in Lake Red Rock, uh, this top line here, are reaching their asymptotic length uh, much more quickly than fish in Rathbun Lake. So overall, for across both reservoir populations, we found that annual, annual survival was roughly 69% across um, reservoirs. We did find that mortality was higher in Lake Red Rock than in Rathbun. And in fact, um, I think it's interesting to note, our mortality estimate for Red Rock was double that of Rathbun. Um, so there's certainly some questions we answered. There's some more work to be done, um, but an interesting first analysis for us. And before I dive into the FAMS results, I'll orient you with this figure since there's a lot going on. Um, each of our columns here represents a different length limit. So slot limit A is our 305 to 381 millimeter slot limit. Uh, slot B, 381 to 432 millimeters. And then last but not least, our maximum length limit of 381 millimeters. Each of our rows here, this top row, is the number, the abundance of fish of quality size within the population and the number of fish um, of preferred size in the population. Uh, lines with these squares are the regulation conditions, and then lines with diamonds are kind of our, if you'd like to call it control conditions, where no regulation. We modeled everything with no regulation in place. And then finally, across the bottom, we varied fishing mortality 
uh, between 0.05 and 0.2 at 0.05 increments. And I should mention that due to uh, sample size limitations, we only conducted the regulation modeling for a broad picture of reservoir flathead catfish in the state. We were unable to uh, simulate regulations specifically by population, which was unfortunate, but it's something that we certainly hope to do in the future. So if we look at our top row here, the uh, effects of regulation on the abundance of quality individuals, we see that all of the regulations do, do pretty well. The slot limits um, are increasing those number of quality size fish, especially at those lower exploitation rates, um, and the maximum length limit is right there behind them. So all three regulations we simulated uh, seem to be effective at increasing the number of quality individuals. Where we see the difference between regu among regulations is really in the number of preferred size individuals um, being added to the population. So the slot limits, they really didn't make the grade. There was kind of a negligible increase in the number of preferred size individuals when implementing those regulations. But the maximum length limit here uh, seems to hold some hope for us if we really want to push our, uh, our populations toward those trophy fisheries and increase the number of larger individuals um, within the population. So overall, we found that all of our regulations did improve abundance of quality and preferred size fish compared to the no regulations conditions with that maximum length limit really um, holding the most hope for increasing the number of preferred fish and all regulations doing relatively well at increasing the number of quality size fish. Uh, we found that slot limits were best at those lower exploitations, whereas the maximum length limit may be um, a little better suited if exploitation is higher. We do not currently have an exploitation estimate for flathead catfish and reservoirs in Iowa. It's certainly a next step we'd like to take. Um, but we, we picked some exploitation values that have been seen in the literature before. Um, so we're, we're hoping that uh, that we can estimate exploitation in our Iowa populations and that, um, that we can further refine our analysis. Mm -hmm. Overall, we did find uh, pretty apparent differences between both Red Rock and Rathman reservoirs. Um, size, structure, condition, and growth all differed between the reservoirs with fish in Red Rock generally being larger, fatter, and growing faster. Um, the mechanisms driving these differences are currently unknown. We have some ideas, um, some hypotheses that we'd love to test. Um, nothing we can say definitively, but we certainly know that there seem to be pretty substantial differences between uh, flathead catfish populations in both of these reservoirs. Um, and just continuing collecting data and, and further refining our, our picture of population characteristics would be prudent. Overall, our study is one of the only recent study on flathead catfish in Iowa reservoirs. It's really the only study, I think, in the last 10 years that's, um, that's been done in Iowa specifically on flatheads and reservoirs. And, and it's helping to provide some insight into population dynamics and build on that small body of catfish research we have in the state and really kind of get the ball rolling on determining what's going on with flathead catfish in Iowa. Obviously, more information is needed moving forward if we want to make informed management decisions and potentially utilize length regulations to our advantage. Um, but we've certainly made a good first step. And as, as any good researcher, now I have about 50 more questions than I did at the onset. So hopefully this is a, an area of study that we can further pursue in the state of Iowa. And with that, I have to thank the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, specifically the Large Impoundments Research Team, for putting up with me and my demands when I made them go sampling for catfish. Um, I'd like to thank Tyler Stubbs, our urban fisheries biologist. Uh, he has a passion for catfish that's unparalleled in the state. And uh, he was provided lots of support, um, extra hand sampling, and, and his sage wisdom throughout the, throughout the project. And I have to thank my supervisor, George Skolton, for letting me take this opportunity to come to the conference, um, present to all of you, and, and supporting this research. And finally, it takes an army to do research, so I would be remiss if I didn't thank the Simpson College student volunteers who came out and collected catfish with us on hot, long summer days. And with that, I will take any questions that you might have.
I'll be around all afternoon too. So if you think of something good, you'll have to come find me. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that um, there's a need to determine exploitation rates of these reservoirs. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, a way of doing this, or what, what do you think you might use? Right now, no, I don't have a way. Um, I mean, it would be great. We have virtually no creel information, especially on like uh, Red Rock. Um, it's such a big reservoir, and, and creel information is expensive to get. Um, we've talked about we have an opportunity to hire someone coming in for a couple months and just getting some baseline information, uh, creel information on Red Rock. So that's an avenue we're pursuing. Um, this was kind of a side project that fell into my lap, so unfortunately I don't have a lot of opportunity to do that. Um, I'd love to do a full creel on both systems. Uh, I think that would be the best route to go. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Awesome, thanks guys.